Hi, this is Cool Hand Mike. In this video, we're going to be going over common Lua functions that you will find when using scripting in BizHawk. What I have here is this is a file that I've created that has a lot of example functions of ones that you will commonly use and see. In this one, I have commented out a lot of these at this point in time. I'm going to go down the list here of functions and then uncomment them as we go through and I'll explain them. If you want to see what uh, the syntax is for a lot of these functions, if you go to Lua console, this window over here and go to help, Lua functions list, a window can appear that will show you the function names, their parameters, and a description. If you copy one of the rows and then say you go here and then copy paste, you can see here the description with the syntax and also an example. This might be helpful if you want to have a quick example of one of these functions here. There are a lot here. I have only have a small subset here in this file of the most common ones that I've seen and used. To start with, let's look at the use memory domain. What this means is when you are doing something like a RAM search, it allows you to view data within certain subsections. You can kind of see what these are here if you also if you go to options memory domains. With SNES the most common one is WRAM. That one should allow you to find uh, almost everything you would need for a game in SNES. Other systems have other memory domains that you may need to use or may want to and this is how you would use it. Let's start going on to the common draw functions here. The GUI draw line, let me refresh. You can see it just draws a line here. Syntax is um, basically, what you do is you use x1, y1, x2, y2, it choose first the first dot that it would start to draw from and then where it would end would be these two here and then the color. The next one that you may, well that's what you, you may use a lot here is draw rectangle. Let me save, save, refresh. This one gets a lot of use if you are trying to do stuff like hitboxes or trying to highlight the area of certain objects. Now one thing to keep in mind here for the drawing here, let me try and find the function so you can see the syntax in here. So I'm going to find draw rectangle. Okay. So you can see here with the draw rectangle is that let me, it allows you to do a transparency. The transparency is the first two uh, values here. See color. It's the same thing. If you copy and paste it there like that, it's very useful. The next one you may use a lot is GUI.drawText. Kind of hard to see there, but let me put it down temporarily. Yeah, you can see some message. 
I'll repeat again with the uh, y values here. St zero is the top, and as you move down the screen, the value increases. So when I put it back to 90, it will go back up this window here. GUI.text. This one uses default text formatting, meaning you can't choose different fonts or different colors. It just is the basic one of what it looks like. You see your text with default default formatting. One other thing to notice with this is as you move, as the function progresses through, it will draw over itself. So text with default formatting here is drawn over the previous one. So what that means is that if you want to draw text over, say, a, a box, you'll want to have the you know, draw rectangle or draw box higher up on the uh, here. Like bef you want it to execute before what you want to draw on top of it. Just a little note there. Here's another one, draw box. Draw box is essentially the same thing as draw rectangle. On this one, you can see I made it a little bit less transparent than the one on the bottom. And I also put a black outline on it. So for these two, the next draw functions I'm going to show you a draw image. Draw image allows you to choose an image that you would like to have drawn onto the screen. You can see here this pet three one. This one doesn't have transparency, but the feather does. Ignore this. This is just um, this is just the slash. Just because of my system setting, it does that. Next, we'll talk about the common read functions. For these, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, comment some of these. The main memory. This is that w. This is using that WRAM. These uh, are addresses. I've just randomly chosen them. A byte is just two hex values. It's one byte, eight bits. And if you use this syntax, you can capture that in the val. It's a local val variable here. U is unsigned. S is signed. And then as you can see, as it goes down, I have some more here. Typically, you're always going to use um, little Indian here, LE. You see, you, have some, you get some different options here, unsigned or signed. Almost, yeah, almost all of the consoles though are uh, little Indian, but I have big Indian here because some systems do use it. And then there is the read byte range, which is slightly different from the other ones, where you give it a start address and then the amount of bytes that you would like to have it be read, how, how many bytes you want it to read for. This one, if you are trying to have it in a format that is other than just single bytes, you may want to go ahead and take a look at this byte range decoder by Bruno Valls. You can format it for you, like say two bytes, signed or unsigned, and 
and then you can get it into a Lua table, and then you can deal with it as you like there. Next, we have the write functions. Yep. These are essentially the same thing as the ones above, where you can write to memory. As you can see, it's pretty much the same thing, just replaced the word read with write. And also, then you add an extra um, parameter for the value that you want to write um, to the, uh, the address. I didn't have the, I don't have the full list here, but you get the picture. It's basically the same thing as the stuff up here. Also, it has the uh, right byte range as well. Next, we're going to talk about common bit functions in BizHawk. And let me uncomment some of these. The first one that's quite common is the bitwise and. It takes two arguments and then uses the, the bitwise and function on those two. The values one and four have no overlapping values. So what happens is returns a zero. The right shift here shifts the value eight. It shifts the bits to the right one place. This is what I'm specifying here. So it returns a four. bit check will check to see if the bit is one in the in the position that you specify zero would be the rightmost position so if you're checking the value two to see if the value one which is really just the second spot over from the most right you can see that that's true because Two would be this value. So it's checking an index, really. Checks this value here. It's true. That's how the bit check works there. For bit clear, for the zero which is the rightmost bit, it will set it to zero. It clears it. So instead of a three, three would be this. Instead, what you get is two. Bit set does the opposite of clear. It will set the bit to one. So if you have four, and then with that value, which would be and then when you set the zero position to one, you get five. You can see it here. If you're not understanding exactly what I'm saying, you can just copy these functions and then play with it yourself. Just, it's always good to test things before you understand exactly how they work anyway. The bitwise XOR function, that, one's, that one is almost like OR, but the almost like the opposite. And for here, what you'd be look, it returns a zero. Next, we're going to briefly go over some options for the screen. So the client.screen width screen height is basically this client here. And with it, you may be able to get the values and then um, use them if you're trying to scale something.
this one, the client game extra padding is extremely useful if you want to draw off of this game window here. So let me refresh that. So as you can see, you have a lot more area here that you can start drawing on. Like for instance, if you wanted to take a get the mouse, let me refresh now. What I've done here is since this is extended, you can now see that it will capture that mouse. Right now, the game isn't running, so it's not updating. But if I unpause it, you can see how the value is updating. Now, right now, I'm not going to run this. But I do want to show how you can save uh, save and load here. Note that if you have Taz Studio open, it will uh, you can put in these values and it acts like the branches. Let me comment this. okay. Next would be the joypad functions down here. What I do is I get the joypad and check to see if player one is pressing right. If so, I'm setting the button B to true and then setting it so that whenever the right button is pressed, B is pressed. There are more useful uh, ways of dealing with the joypad, but this is an example of how to get and set it. So if I were to save it, update it, and now let this run, I'm going to press the right key. As you can see, I have the um, both of the I have the inputs displayed right here. I'm only pressing on the keypad here, right, but B is being pressed. You can see the little reading input right here. but it works with that. And those are most of the common functions that you're gonna come across when you look through a lot of scripts. There are other uh, parameters and functions that you may wanna use, but just remember that if you do wanna view some others that may help you, you can go to that help and take a look at in here or you can go to the tazvideos.org slash bizhawk slash lua functions.html there may also be a common functions list um, page coming soon uh, there was a user that was going to be working on that and that should be it this file is also going to be available and it will the link will be in the description all right thank you for watching